Hello world, welcome back to Source Decoded. Benjamin here. Today I'm just going to do a quick video about a fundamental concept in software development, and that is interfaces. Um, an interface is the way that your software object interacts with the outside world, basically. It's, it's anything that another piece of software can see on your software object and use to interact with the functionality inside of that object. As an example here, I've got one of my prized possessions, this here, Apple IIc. Um, my first programming I ever did was on one of these. This particular model is the third ROM revision, so it has 128 kilobytes of RAM, and it is a much sought after, at least to me, um, piece of technology. So this uh, computer has a bunch of functionality inside of it. It is more than just a keyboard. Um, it's got a lot of brains in there, and you need a way to get at what's going on inside the computer. So over here on the back, you can see we have all of these ports. Um, this is the power, um, and that is, is a kind of interface. But uh, let's talk about these. Here's a serial port. It's got a little printer icon on it. This is an external disk drive port. This is how you hooked up a black and white, or uh, in most cases, green and black monitor. Uh, this was the color monitor jack here, another serial port, and the joystick or gamepad connector. Each of these things is an interface to the computer. It exposes functionality inside the computer to the outside world. You notice they're all different shapes except for the two serial ports. Um, these serial ports, in most cases, are pretty much interchangeable. If you had a serial device, you could plug it into either one of these, and it should work fine. There was uh, some extra uh, firmware on the modem port, I believe, so you could only plug a modem in there. But both of these, essentially, we'd say implements the same serial interface, so, so they had the same, uh, the same form factor. If it fit, you could plug it in, and for the most part, expect that it would do what you wanted it to do. The computer has some more interfaces, too. Uh, this disk drive is a kind of interface. We put information on a floppy disk like this, put it in, and the computer is able to interact with it, get data off and put data on. The keyboard is part of the human interface. It's how the human interacts with the functionality, functionality sorry, inside the computer. And then over here is one of my favorites. Next to the volume knob, you see this headphone jack here. This is a standard 8th inch headphone jack, and it is roughly the same headphone jack that they still put on computers today. Um, this thing was manufactured in 1984, I believe, and I just love how this thing has persisted all that time. The only difference is this is a mono jack. Um, most of them are stereo now, or even better. Now, in software, it's pretty much the same concept. We make these software objects, and we want to expose parts of their functionality to other pieces of software. Otherwise, they wouldn't be that useful to anyone. So we do that through interfaces. Everything on your software object that is public and visible to any other software object or a human is part of its interface. Um, any public variables, public methods, and uh, I guess that's about it, isn't it, are, are, are part of the interface. Sometimes you can be explicit about the interface and say, um, my car implements, in some languages, the iDrivable interface. And what that means is your car will have methods and variables that are made public that are defined by this iDrivable interface. It's a contract that says, I'm going to make a car and it's going to do at least these things. Um, and that, that's really helpful for a lot of reasons, because when you're, uh, you're, you're making something, you probably know beforehand what you want it to do and how you want it to present itself to the outside world. So you can go define these interfaces that set up contracts with other software objects so that they can be sure that when they call the go forward method on your car, then it's going to be able to do that. The other nice thing about that is the tools that we use, our IDEs, for writing this stuff because it they can know about these interfaces. They can help you make sure that you've implemented at least everything in that interface. If you try and compile your car object 
without having implemented everything that you said it should have in order to be a car, then um, your IDE's not even gonna let you compile. It's gonna say, hold on, you forgot to put in brakes. So you should do that because I know that if I even tried to compile this right now, it's gonna fail because you promised to have brakes and you didn't put any brakes. Now it doesn't mean that if I make a car and I say it implements the iDrivable interface, that's all it can present to the outside world. It can present whatever else it wants to, but it has to present at least what I said it would in the interface. So the serial ports, for example, they both present to the outside world the basic serial functionality. Um, the modem port, though, presents a little bit more to, that makes it able to interact with modems. Some software, some programming languages, um, do not allow for these explicit interfaces. They don't let you say up front what the object's going to do. Uh, a notable example is JavaScript, which is a dynamic language, which means um, the tool can't know beforehand what that object might do within its lifetime, because you can actually add things to the object at runtime. You can add things to the interface. So the tooling really has no way of knowing if you, um, at some point when this program runs, that object may well have go forward and stop on it. Um, but it may not. It, it just can't help you with that. So in those cases, we have to be a little more careful to make sure that our objects that we're making will present the interface to the outside world that the outside world is going to expect of them. And there's some trade-offs, you know, either way, and, and we'll save a discussion for static and dynamic types for another day. It's just important to, to recognize that anything that is public on your object is part of its interface. And you want to be careful about what you make public because somebody well might misunderstand what your object is for. Um, I could sure use this as a doorstop because it would work fine. It's got plenty of weight and um, some rubber feet on the bottom and some of these cool aftermarket Velcro something or other that would make it work really well as a doorstop, but it was not designed to do that. You need to make sure that your software objects don't lend themselves to being misused, and you especially want to protect the implementation that's going on inside. I don't have to know how the serial port works outside of what is defined by the interface. I don't know, I don't need to know the source code of the firmware inside that, that makes them operate. I just need to know what the interface does. And that's the great thing about interfaces is that they can allow us to hide the implementation details of that interface inside the object and save the outside world from having to care about that. And that's actually why we say in uh, some languages that this class implements this interface, but we made no promises about how we implemented it. We just promise that we will. I think that's about it. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any other questions about interfaces, leave them in the comments below. And if you like these shorter videos where we just focus on one little programming concept, uh, let us know. If you really just prefer the whiteboard, that's good feedback too. Please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.